Today's video is actually about This Is Us. So if you don't know what This Is Us is, I don't know if you live under a rock, but This Is Us is a show that is shared on NBC, but I think it's, I think I get on like Hulu or Netflix or one of them. So that's what I'm going to talk about today. This Is Us. So subscribe to my channel and I don't know, stick around and let's do This Is Us. So anyways, This Is Us follows the PSM family. But before I even go into like what the dynamics of the show is, let me just say this about This Is Us. It's not a superhero movie or series. It's, it doesn't have a lot of conspiracy. It's not Game of Thrones killing people. This is just a sort of like a palate cleanser because it doesn't really show like a dystopian world or like you know where everything is going to be. Like that's the beauty about This Is Us. This Is Us excels in its simplicity. Like it's just about a family that has you know the branches of a family. So the Pearson family, Jack and Kate, they had triplets but one of the triplets was adopted and how the family dynamic grows how they integrate the you know sibling rivalry the everything everything that makes a family a family is what this is, is about so like that's a great thing about it because i remember after the first episode aired when i saw it i'm like oh, this is another show that looked just off but when the first episode ended i was hooked onto the show and because this is the thing around the same time this just came the, most of the shows that were on TV or most of the shows that people were watching were about violence or like sex or like you know someone is killing someone or like there's some conspiracy to bring down the government to bring down someone like it was just a lot but then then this is us came and I was like what like whatever you need from a show this show had it because I was like it followed a family so there's a family whereby there are three two guys and a girl, they are triplets, one, but one is African American and you know the whole dynamics that goes into it so they just ended season 2 so after 2 seasons, this is us rated for like the number 1 show I think after Big Bang Fury which honestly Big Bang has been going on for like 11 seasons now so fair is fair but this is the thing about this is us, when this is us like after I went through this for like 3 episodes, I don't watch this is us with my siblings with anybody anyways like there's no way i watch the show with an audience with somebody no this is a solo show for me because it's very the way the show goes you would think that oh you know you the way you expect people to go that's not how it goes like that's why even on twitter that when you type this is as the emoji that comes it's a tissue box i weep after every episode of this is like there's no way i can finish one episode where i have a dry eye no 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 they are tears. Tears come all the time because you know it follows a, a family that loses their dad when they are 17 and how growing up without their dad and you know how they relate to their mom, their stepmom, even the one that's married, that is Randall, like how he be, like how he like behaves with his kids, how the other two twins one is suffering with her weight gain. And that was a that was the first part of the story that I actually connected with, like suffering with weight gain. Because obesity and you know reasons why people are addicted to food, reasons why people binge on food, is not something that is really spoken about. Like when people talk about like, oh this girl is obese, or like oh there's obesity on the rise, everybody goes like, oh just stop eating. But this show actually delved into the fact that there's a lot of more that goes behind obesity than just you know binge eating or anything. Just sometimes it's psychological. Sometimes you relate food with something and. That first part was amazing for me. The second part about this whole show was how it handled Jack dying. Cause you know most shows, if they are going to like, if a major character is going to die, I mean Game of Thrones has given us the formula for letting a major character die: beheading, a red wedding, poisoning at a wedding, dying somewhere. Like Game of Thrones has so inundated us to like. People die, and I think at this point, when you see, if you watch Game of Thrones and someone dies, you see that's just any other thing. But this show handled dying like something real, like something that you could relate to, especially like if you've lost a parent or if you've lost someone close to you. It handled it with so much respect and with so much, I don't know, like I've, anytime I, I finish watching the show, I feel like I've been cleansed. And I know what a lot of people are going to say, oh, it's just another show. True, it is just another TV show, but then it also has this dynamic that is very profound. Like, if you have siblings, I, I'm not sure people go along, like get along with their siblings all the time, 
but this show breaks it down like if you are older how you relate with your siblings because sometimes you have unresolved issues from your childhood that surfaces when you are older and you are dealing with much bigger things because you would think that oh something that happened 10 years ago is really irrelevant to the conversation now but then you would realize that you know what that unresolved thing 10 15 years ago is what is wearing its ugly head now and that's what the show does really well and also the thing is that it doesn't treat the emotions like it's just an afterthought most shows they shy away from the emotions like they treat the emotions like oh you know oh yeah and then their emotions but this one is like the emotion is actually part of what makes the show the show because when you go on youtube when I like a show, I do like a lot of things about it. I really stop the show. So when you go on YouTube, they do this after show whereby they sit around and then each of the characters go into what made them decide to do this in this particular scene. And that's very poignant for me because most of the time when you're watching movies, you just see how they act. You just see their actions in the movie. And then we don't really pay attention to the characters in the movie, like the people, the actors playing the characters what they took into the sh like into the role and what they took out of the role because because that's the thing and people should forgive me right because in Ghana right like if you ask people okay so who is their character like they should break their character down to its basis level a lot of people can't they just like oh you know that's a rich person like it's a rich woman who has been blah 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 but when I watch the after show they break it down as in personally they take their own personal experiences and put it into the move into the show when they keep on saying movie they take their own personal experiences and then they put it into the show sometimes some of the scripts they alter it so that it will fit the narrative or you know there's so much levity there's so much mm, that goes into the show that makes it just really really good so one of the best things about the show is the after show like the tears yes you will cry bucket blows like if you haven't seen this is us they just ended season 2. Season 3 will come somewhere in October. So I have from now to October to binge watch it. But please, if you are going to binge, please have like a, pocket, like a bag of tissue because you are going to cry a lot. Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm the only one that's crying. Because I know most of the people that I tell it to, like, oh, you should actually see the show. They come back like, yeah, like it really hits you in the feels. And that's it about This Is Us. And also, this show is personal for me, right? Because I lost my dad 10 years ago. And you know when you lose someone that's close to you and you don't talk about it and then you act like, oh yeah, it's cool, like it's just a part of life. And then you watch something like this and then it informs you that, you know what, it actually did happen and sometimes not talking about it is as harmful as like forgetting about it. So it makes you come to the consciousness that, yeah, sometimes like, there are some things that have to be pushed aside, there are some things that have to be addressed head on. So this is just like... It just had this like sophomore run, the second season, and it's gotten so many awards. A lot of people are hate on the fact that it's gotten so many awards, but it deserves every single award it gets because the characters are so good and you actually see growth in the characters. That's the amazing thing. Like the characters don't just stay at one place. You see them grow and you see them change. You see like even when they go back, even when they revert to their old ways. You kind of see that even though they are still behaving how they used to, there is growth in it. And I mean, that's all you would want from a show. A show where characters are growing, a show where the script is amazing, the show where the characters are amazing, the show where the storyline makes sense. Because I know sometimes you want to watch something that will, you know, take you out or something that will just, you know, make you feel different. If that's your speed, that's Mr. Robots. There are other shows that you know for whatever, but then sometimes if you want just an everyday family, the show is just for you. And for me, personally, I, if I had my own way, I'd give the show like 9 over 10, but I'd give it like 8. And another great thing, like just to end this, just to end this review, another great thing about the show is that it takes place over three different timelines. So it starts from when they were say 8, 10, to when they were teenagers, and then to when they actually grew to be how they are right now, that's 36. And you would think that a show that takes place over three timelines, like at a point it will not make sense. But when they move into the timeline, when there's a flashback, it does it so well when like there's a flash forward, like it does it so well. So even though you're following an action that's going on in the present, even when they do a flashback, 
you still follow it, you still get a sense of why they are doing that flashback and how that flashback relates to what's happening now. Because there have been so many shows that when they do flashback, you are just, no, you don't want that to be part of it. But this show does it so well. Like, when they show the kids and then they are, the kids are 8, 9, 10, there's a sense of, okay, you know actually what's happening. When the kids are teenagers, you still have that connection. And when they are 36 now, you still have that connection. And that's the most amazing thing about it. The fact that they have an ensemble cast and the ensemble cast put to, like, they generate all the emotions so well. Because Randall, when he was 8, is the same behavior when he was a teenager, is the same behavior when, like, when he's 37 now. And I think that's what is amazing about the show. That even though it takes place over three timelines, now four, because like right now, they are older, they are doing flash forwards. So even though it takes place over four different timelines in life, yeah, sometimes they make mistakes and bring like flat screen TVs in the 80s, which is like, then you catch them that, haha, yes. And that's like petty, petty things. But then when it comes to the core of what the show is, it handles the flashbacks, it handles the timelines beautifully, right? And I feel like I'm getting emotional right now. So. But then the thing is that the show is really good. And so then that's just about it, about This Is Us. So if any of you guys watch the show, or you are starting to watch the show, let me know in the comments below. Honestly, leave me a comment about This Is Us, because it's very personal for me. Right? Every show is personal for me, but this is especially personal for me. So my name is Ifa Labi. Subscribe to my channel. Right? Be part of this family that keeps on growing. And I don't know, I haven't been excited, I haven't told you guys, but like I hit 100 subscribers, right? So that's amazing. I hit 100 subscribers. So it's really been an amazing journey for me. So subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos that are going to be around. And I'll see you on my next video.